Ever picked a motherboard that promised the world and somehow tripped you up at every turn? Let's unravel the truth about the best M8TX boards you can actually trust for your next build. Today, I'm breaking down five top contenders from solid budget picks all the way to absolute powerhouses. I've dug into their quirks, strengths, and yes, a few annoying deal breakers. Stick around, because by the time we hit number one, you'll know exactly what to hunt for and what you should avoid. Five, Gigabyte 550MK. I put this one through its paces with a Ryzen 5000 chip, and on paper, it checks a lot of the usual boxes. AM4 support, dual M.2 slots for fast storage, DDR4 up to 28 gigabits, and a tidy micro ATX layout that fits almost any build. Setup is super straightforward. The essential ports are here, HDMI, DisplayPort, four USB 3.2 Gen 1s, and enough SATA slots for basic users. I was actually surprised by how compact and affordable this board was for anyone just building their first system or trying to save money. But um, let's talk power delivery. My excitement dropped when I really started hammering it with a higher-end CPU. VRMs just didn't keep up. Temps spiked easily, especially under heavier stress, and I noticed a few frame drops during long gaming sessions. If your rig is going to see more than casual use, or you plan on overclocking, this is honestly an obvious weak link. You'll be fine for standard office work or mid-range gaming, but if you're even thinking about a beefier graphics card, keep that in mind. Plus, there are no M.2 heat sinks, so don't expect wild speeds without throttling. Bottom line, it does most things right for entry-level builds, but if you need endurance and extra headroom, you'll want to keep moving up the list. Number four, MSI B550M Pro VDH. Sliding in at number four is the MSI B550M Pro VDH, which I put in a mid-tier gaming setup with a Ryzen 7. Right away, it felt more substantial, especially with its extra M.2 slot and reliable Wi-Fi module, which the B550MK just can't touch. MSI throws in support for quirky memory configs up to DDR4 4400 MHz, and BIOS updates are simple. This really is a set and forget board for most builders. USB 3.2 Gen 2 support, PCIe 4.0, and a stable layout finish up the fundamentals. But even MSI's core boost and dedicated cooling can't totally mask its budget DNA. I ran into some quirks with the VRM cooling after a couple of solid benchmark runs. The board felt a little warmer than I'd like. And you know, the rear I.O. could use a little more love, only basic port selection and no fancy add-ons here. If you crave clean cable management, you'll wish for extra fan headers. And while the built-in Wi-Fi is a plus, it's not exactly top tier in real-world speed and signal strength. It's better than Gigabyte's entry, no argument, but you can still feel the cost cutting if you look close. For typical gaming or productivity, it holds up fine. Push it too far or expect high-end stability, and you'll probably want to keep climbing. Three. Gigabyte B760M DS3HAX. Now, we're reaching that sweet spot. The Gigabyte B760M DS3HAX comes out swinging for Intel builds, and honestly, this one actually surprised me in a good way. First impression, the set of features is spot on for modern gaming and office setups. It's got full support for Intel's latest CPUs, Wi-Fi 6E right out of the box, a PCIe 4.0 slot for future-proofing, and crucially, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Storage, dual M.2 slots, plus all the SATA you'll want for a mainstream build. I threw a Core i5-13600K and RTX 4060 into it, and really everything just worked. Performance matched other boards in day-to-day -day tasks, and even under long gaming marathons, stability never slipped. I noticed the power delivery handled sustained loads way better than either previous AMD-based board, and there's none of the thermal throttling drama you sometimes get at lower budgets. Yes, aesthetics are a little plain, especially compared to fancier boards, but unless you're showing off your build to everyone, it won't matter. Still, if you're the kind of builder who needs wow factor inside your glass case, just be warned. So, it's more business than party here. And yeah, there are some limits. Run an ultra high-end chip, and the board might start sweating under heavy AVX loads. 
For most users though, especially anyone running mid-range CPUs and a single GPU, it'll hum along quietly, getting the job done without any drama. Two ASUS Prime Z790M Plus. Moving to the runner-up spot, it's the ASUS Prime Z790M Plus, which I tested with an Intel i7-14700K and wow, talk about reliable performance. Right out of the box, this MATX board looks and feels premium. It has everything you'd expect from ASUS, 10 plus one DocMOS power stages, PCIe 5.0 support for crazy fast GPUs, loads of M.2 slots, three, and a Thunderbolt USB 4 header. ASUS absolutely nails cooling, by the way. The VRM heat sinks are huge, and Fan Expert 4 software is a treat for tuning fan profiles without hassle. But what really sets this one apart is how easy everything is. Seriously, BIOS flashes are fast. Memory overclocking? Smooth. The extra power connectors and six-layer PCB meant I could push things further with absolutely no weird crashes. Even under loads that left cheaper boards flailing, the Prime Z790M Plus stayed cool, stable, and dead quiet. With advanced power phases and clever circuit layouts, you just never get that am I pushing this too far anxiety. Day-to-day -day use is almost boring in its regularity. No USB dropout, no memory quirks, just rock solid uptime. Are there downsides? It's definitely pricier, and while the aesthetics are clean, they don't quite have that gaming bling. But for most people, function trumps flair. If you use your PC for heavy multitasking, gaming, and swapping hardware every few years, this board grows with you. It's a massive step up from more budget-conscious rivals. Honestly, it makes them feel like toys. Number one, Asus Tough Gaming B850M Plus. Let me say it outright, this board is a beast for serious builders, and it earned its spot in my book after days of real-world use. Rockstable foundation for AMD Ryzen 9000, 8000, or 7000 series CPUs, PCIe 5 no graphics and storage, DDR5, yep, next-gen memory speed, plus Wi-Fi 6E and blazing fast 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. It's basically everything I'd want for a performance build, tucked neatly into a micro ATX frame. What I love here isn't just the sheer power delivery, 14 plus 2 plus 1 Dogmoss stages, or crazy resilience thanks to military-grade components. It's the tiny touches. Onboard M.2 Q-latch means no screw fumbling, BIOS flashback for stress-free updates, and pre-installed I.O. shield. Even the M.2 slots get real heat sinks, no thermal runaway, even on non-stop rendering sessions. Temps stayed in check, sound was minimal, and every issue I had with entry-level boards just vanished. Gaming, content creation, multitasking, everything just clicked with zero bottlenecks. And Asus does such a good job making this board future-proof. When I threw in Bleeding Edge DDR5, the system posted instantly. No compatibility lottery, which is something older boards can't always promise. The industrial look is spot on for a tough workhorse too. No wasted space or pointless fluff, just a confident, capable foundation. If I had to nitpick, sure, it's not the cheapest board out there. But the real question is, do you want to second guess your motherboard or just enjoy your build? For me, this one's not just the safest bet. It's a genuine upgrade that made my whole system feel bulletproof. So what's the takeaway? Entry-level boards like the Gigabyte B550MK and even the MSI B550M Pro VDH get you up and running, but you trade some stability and speed. Gigabyte's B760M DS3HAX starts to feel like real quality, but ASUS's offerings, especially the Z790M Plus and Tough Gaming B850M Plus, just play in another league. They're investments, sure, but after living with them, they're worth every penny for anyone serious about building a machine they never have to worry about again. That's the kind of confidence every builder deserves.